Welcome to Market Buzz. I'm Greg Schnell, the Canadian technician and host of the Market Buzz. Each show, we do a deep dive into different industries using weekly charts to see what is happening on a long timeline. Please follow me on Twitter at Schnell Investor, and you can also find my blogs on ospreystrategic.org as well as stockcharts.com. So I want to talk about a couple of things this week. Um, one is the market made new lows on uh, Tuesday night, and then we had Microsoft earnings overnight as well as uh, Alphabet. And Alphabet was down, Microsoft was up, but uh, overall the NASDAQ was still looking weak at the end of it all. So we'll find out if that's any different by the time you watch this on Wednesday morning. But we're down about 23% on the NASDAQ from the highs it made in November. Um, We're down a long way. And that's okay. We could still drop quite a bit farther. To me, it looks like the big neckline on this head and shoulders topping structure is going to crack and crack meaningfully. Um, We have three more big earnings. We have Facebook, Apple, and Amazon over the next few days. So when all of this comes through, it'll be interesting to see how the market digests that. And then next week we have the Fed meeting. So uh, we've got lots of things to talk about and worry about and deal with as investors. But what I want to cover off is this word relative strength. So I, I want to cover off, yes, you can time the market. Um, I, I keep hearing these ads on TV that no, you can't time the market. And I, I just can't help but want to say, um, well, maybe with your method of market analysis, you can't time the market, but there are lots of people who do it and make a lot of money doing it. Um, So I want to I want to point that out and then I want to cover off understanding relative strength and then the different views of relative strength. So what does that mean? Well, Relative strength means you're comparing to something, and the case would be if it's the S&P 500 or the NASDAQ or uh, another stock market index if you're trading in a different part of the world, or comparing it to a sector or to an industry group. All of these are choices for relative strength. So that's how we're going to cover it off. And if you want to know more about relative strength, um, I wrote about it in the book Stock Charts for Dummies, but we do this live on our website um, each day posting uh, how strong the market is and whether the market's rolling over. When the market's rolling over and everything's going down, relative strength still might mean you're outperforming the market, but you're losing money. And, And that's the reason I made that distinction on the same page. Can you time the market and can you use relative strength? Yes, exactly. That's the point is you don't have to stay in and lose money you can also step aside and wait. And um, that's what we try to do at Osprey Strategic. So you can try an annual membership for $860. You can try a one month membership at just $7. But as an example, in 2021, we had eight buy signals. Uh, So if you're getting in near those buy signals, you can make a lot of money to the upside. If you're getting in at the top after three or four weeks when everything starts to look pretty, That's the harder part. So you need something to help you get in the market and out of the market. Um, It's critical that you try um, to understand that when you, whatever, decide to stay in the market when the market's pulling back, um, and maybe it's tax or whatever, you might have a reason for it. The important, the really important thing to remember is that as the market tops out and uh, it falls, Obviously, it'll fall quicker than it um, turns, or than it climbs. We know that that's historical. But the the bigger issue is trying to protect your capital and your confidence. So if you can just stand aside for a lot of the drops and get back in near the lows, and I have an indicator that helps me get out and helps me get in, um, that really makes a difference. And I want to give you some examples of that. Um, so hopefully, head over to Osprey Strategic and just see if you're interested. Okay, so um, the one thing that I think is pretty important, here is the newsletter I sent out. And so you can see the date on here, March 28th, midday. And um, I sent this to the members of Osprey Strategic. And I said, I would like the market to keep rising here, but it is definitely struggling at an important point. 
What I pointed out was that we were just sitting right here at this 4550, 4600 level and we were trying to get the S&P to go higher and my point was we were starting to have a reversal day right at this high. So I'll point out my indicator at the bottom um, when we get through these other charts. But the idea being, here's the NASDAQ, and we're right at an important level where it was trying to bounce in here on the way up. And then it, it became resistance uh, on, as it came down. And we got right up to the same level, 15,000 call it, and then started to roll back down. Now here's the Dow 30. It had a really important support and resistance level going through the middle of this chart. So here it was resistance, here it was support, resistance, came down here, fell through it, then it was a little bit of resistance, then it made it above, then it became support, then it came down, was resistance again, became support, became resistance, and came back up. So we're right here. And again, the 200-day moving average and that horizontal line sitting right on top of each other. All of this was at the same time on March the 28th. The NASDAQ composite, that first chart was the NASDAQ 100, but you can see uh, this one was so easy. The line in the sand was just about um, obvious. You could have hold it, held up a piece of paper right at that very line and, and uh, saw what was support and resistance. And then the Toronto Stock Exchange had tried to break out and was trying to hold that breakout. And so what had happened here was my Schnell Strength Indexes had started to peak uh, right at this point and my big thing was that um, it's at a peak where it has topped out since the market top has been under construction from September 22nd to now. I need a better price action today. My goal here is to protect profits. Maybe I'm worrying about nothing. As a technician, this is a critical area for the market to get through. I raised a lot of cash today, including selling some long-held Canadian oil stocks. And so the, the big thing that I wanted to emphasize was it wasn't like I just talked about it. I actually did it. I sold off 90% of my portfolio or I, I, I raised my portfolio to 90% cash on that day. And if we want to go back and look now at where is that on a chart, we'll pull up the NASDAQ and we're right here. Uh, I mentioned it was March the 28th midday. So let's just extend this out a couple of days. And you'll see on March 28th midday, we were right around here. And we, we spent the next week just going sideways. So we had a couple of days to get out and then the market's been down. So now we're down 15% from, uh, from that warning. And again, you can time the market if you're using the right tools. And my indicator was saying we were stretched. Um, and so the, the newsletter that I sent out to clients and we discussed it at the conference call on the March 31st was that um, we were well positioned for this market to roll over hard. So when we do that, we need to either take action or, or play defense by some sort of um, put protection or an inverse ETF just to hold our account flat while the market corrects. Any of those are choices. My, my big um, conundrum, obviously, is the market could have moved higher against me for let's say a few percentage points but my big thing was that the market was in a very uncertain place and that the road higher was a lot harder than the road lower and it was easier to move to cash and let somebody else make the hard money than try to protect capital by being in the market and trying to find the few stocks still going up while the overall overall market went down so when we talk about this relative strength it's a big deal and and what we need to understand um, about relative strength is the different ways to display it. And then we can talk specifically um, how to use it. So when you have, and I'm going to use Tesla today, and I'm using Tesla because it fell 12%. But um, it's not to make it a poster boy of relative strength. It's, to, it's because it moved so much today that it helps to understand what's going on on the stock. So first of all, you have your price action. And one of the things that price action doesn't tell you, like this scale here is from 600 to 1200 over a period of whatever, about nine months. And, and so in this time, Tesla has a double on the chart, right? Up over 100%. And so these are, you know, it doesn't look like much, but if I go show you a chart of, let's say, XLP, um, it might have moved $20 um, 
from 50 to 70 or something like that. And, and so you've got something that's up 40% and something that's up over 100%. The chart will always scale from the bottom to the top and change the scale so you, so you don't really notice that it's up a double. Um, it looks the same as an XLP chart. The difference is how far the price action is. This has $50 price um, scale, whereas XLP has a price scale of $1. It's that kind of change that's hard to recognize on the chart, and that's why relative strength is so important. So I wanna talk about the different types of relative strength, and one of them is this um, relative strength compared to the S&P 500. So let's just take this and make it a little bit higher, um, a little bit taller so we can focus on it. And the idea being when relative strength is declining hard, um, you know, typically you're in a downtrend and then when it all of a sudden starts to outperform, that can be helpful to get involved. And you can see back here, Tesla was outperforming the S&P 500, went on a super surge and, you know, that, that wasn't a bad time to take profit, right? That ended up being the actual top in the market after it did this parabolic run. Well, then it pulled back and Elon was selling and a few other things were going on. But in general, it was making lower highs and lower lows in relative strength. So whether you draw the line like this or you get more ambitious and just pick a, I'll call it a, a line through here and, and just use that line for guidance and say, okay, in general, it's still underperforming. Well, then it starts to change its tune and it breaks a four month downtrend and that's pretty valuable. So if you'd have got in roughly here, you're at 850 and you'd have written it up to 1150. That's a huge move. That is $300 on 800. It was like 40% in two or three weeks. And then again, you could draw your uptrend line not a bad place to leave, and now it's making lower highs and lower lows. So is there any reason to go grab Tesla right now? I would say no until it either bases or starts to take out a downtrend of relative strength. And again, people can choose to stay in Tesla and try to ride it for the big move. I just as soon get base hits as home runs. And the reason is because you never know, it, it, if your goal is to hang on for the final high, there's no exit sign there. The only thing you have is uh, a market top and it rolls down from there and you don't, you know, did you realize in November that that was Tesla's top for the time being? I didn't realize it, but I knew it was time to take profits. That's all we knew. Um, the so, so this is one example of ways to trade it. And again, when you get parabolic surges on relative strength, it's usually a good time to take profits, especially if you made 25 or 50% in a month. Um, those opportunities don't come around very often. And I know many people think, you know, it'll go 300% in two months. Um, but we were also in a position where the market um, was very exuberant. So, uh, my indicators were starting to roll over and it was telling us to at least be cautious. So that's one type of relative strength. Now the second type of relative strength, let's just uh, shrink this down. The second type of relative strength is the scooter ranking. And the difference between the scooter ranking and the uh, relative strength compared to the S&P 500 is this just tells you if it's outperforming the S&P 500 and much like it does it to the price scale, it changes the scale over here. Now, um, I visited Grayson at Stock Charts um, in just a, a week or two ago. And, and the big thing that um, we talked about there was that you could also change this from price to price performance. Now that's going to help a little bit. Um, and when I say help a little bit, what's it, what's it going to do? Well, it'll actually tell you how much it's outperforming by. So that makes it a little bit, a little bit better. And again, the, the idea behind that is it's going to change this scale to a percentage. And so you can actually see how much Tesla is outperforming by over the period on the chart. So it's always from this left edge to wherever, um, so if we picked it right here, it would have no outperformance. I hope that makes sense, but it's where the chart starts that matters when you use that percentage change or, or performance um, level. So again, it's from the left edge of the chart. Okay, but what the, 
What the scooter ranking does is it actually gives you a percentage ranking. It says Tesla's price action right now is outperforming, and at this point it was outperforming 99% of the stock. So it's pretty hard to be bearish when it's the best performing stock out there. And the other thing was it was staying above this 75% level. And for me, I like the 75% level. And the reason I like it is because it's saying the top is one of the top 25% of the stocks out there against its large cap peers. So that's a pretty important criteria. But the other thing I'll say about the scooter ranking, it doesn't give you the best sell signals. I think the actual relative strength where you can draw the trend line and have something exit or a PPO momentum signal or something like that rolling over is better. So then Tesla starts to become an average stock and floats between 30 and 70. And if I showed you the Royal Bank, you'll find out that it basically floats between 30 and 70 compared to its large cap peers. Um, the ticker symbols RY if you wanted to go look at it. But what you'll find is it's got a scooter ranking that just floats in there. And really the stock never becomes one of the top performers. So my question would be, do I want to own something that never becomes a top performer? And the answer is no. I'd rather own something like Tesla that when it's running, it's running. And when it's not running, I'm out of it. Um, but if you're, if you're trying to get the big 10 year gain, that's a really hard goal because it's very hard to know when to leave. And Facebook, Netflix, those are great examples of would you have left near the highs? And of course, everybody would have in hindsight, but the reality is, did you sell your shares? And if you didn't sell your shares, what were you waiting for? Well, you thought it was gonna keep going. We all know that. So try to figure out an, a reason to exit your stock, what, what it would take to kick you out. And if you're going for the 10 year home run, um, it's hard work, but I would just say, um, you're gonna have to find some discipline be it a weekly chart or a monthly chart to help get you out near the top so that you don't give back all of the gains. Okay, so with the scooter ranking again, now Tesla's got a scooter ranking of 35% or 36%. Let's just say it hovers down here for three or four months like it did back in here. Everything was going up and Tesla was still climbing, but it wasn't climbing very fast. And then all of a sudden, it went from being one of the worst, so I like it when it gets better than 30%, and it took off and it went up and it went on a long run for about five or six months, and then the scooter ranking starts to break. So here I'm waiting for this to get oversold, or not oversold, but down into the bottom, and then when it starts to improve again, I probably want to get back on board. So that's the second method. Now again, you can, you can compare it to whatever you want. You could compare it to the NASDAQ. In this case, that, that scooter ranking compares the price action to all the other stocks in its category, in this case, large caps. So now let's go down and look at these other types. Um, we're gonna look at both the industry and the sector. And the idea being, you can see that Tesla was also outperforming its sector and outperforming its industry group um, as it went through that big spike in October. And then here in February, March, it started to outperform again. Um, there was a downtrend against its sector and there was a, a horizontal trend against its industry group and it started to make a nice big run. So it didn't matter if you were comparing it to its sector, its industry group, uh, price action on itself as it broke the downward trend line, the relative strength price action, the scooter ranking went to 75. All of these relative strength indi indicators were telling us something was changing on the charts. The most important thing to remember is when it changed on the charts, um, it's a great place to get in, but now you need to decide what you're going to use to exit. And, and maybe it starts to underperform all of its peers in the consumer discretionary or it starts to underperform the autos and it hasn't really started to underperform the, the autos that much it's really just sideways over the last month so that still looks good to me but what I saw was that the relative strength on the S&P 500 was starting to break a parabolic uptrend where it moved meaningfully from outperforming by 20 percent to 40 you know to 60 percent that's huge and that massive gain is something that you could take as profit rather than waiting, I'll call it for some of these other signals to kick in. So these are all different ways to view relative strength. And I think 
again, the most critical thing to try and um, think about is when relative strength is in your favor, um, you're outperforming the market. But now I want to change the chart to XLU. And um, XLU is not going to have sector industry data. But what you see here is this chart is basically hovering under performing the S&P 500 all the way until late February and then it starts to outperform. So over the last 15 weeks or yeah about that but over the last uh, eight weeks I guess um, it's outperformed by 15%. Now here's the problem with that outperformance of 15% is if we put the S&P 500 up okay on this same chart it and and what you're going to see is um, it's it the S&P was running up and then it fell down and so the big issue is the S&P is flat or down in that period and the real question for you is you've made some money but now when that reversal comes the other way is it fast enough for you to catch it and actually take home the profit so you XLU has outperformed but you also have the risk that you're in something that's starting to get more volatile. So if we talk about Target as an example, um, or I uh, should think of a different utility, this one's more of a consumer staple. Um, but this was 250 down to 235 in the last week. And you're sitting there holding the stock. It's still a 10% pullback um, in something that was outperforming just the prior three weeks. Again, what I'm trying to say is as the stock market rolls over, it's hard for you to make those decisions in a timely fashion to hold on to those gains. So one of the things that, um, that I like to think about is that if you think of the, I'm going to use this one here. If you think of the, the chart lists um, or the, the strength of the market rolling over as a whole. This is my Schnell Strength Index today. And it's now in the bottom territory, which is an area where I at least want to be aware that the market is so beaten down, it could turn higher. Now, you can see back in January, it tried to turn higher and we ended up staying in a downtrend. So there was some, like this was that 40% move in Tesla. Um, there's still some opportunities when it does turn up if you're in the right stocks. But my big thing to think about is when everything's rolling down. So right here is this letter I sent to my clients saying that my index is topping out. We're at a place of resistance on the charts and we should really be careful. Well, if you could avoid this whole slide rather than trying to be in whatever utilities or something else and just wait it out. And now when it gets down into this bottom area, now you have an opportunity to wait for it to turn back higher. To me, that's really valuable information. And again, I don't think my clients have lived through any of the NASDAQ pullback or the S&P downturns um, since the beginning of the year. We've been getting them out of the market and we've been helping them trade the market. Or if they don't want to trade in a bear market, we suggested just waiting, just stay in cash and wait uh, for a better uh, market signal to get long again. But if, if you want to trade it, then you're going to have to take these two week rides and then get back out. And again, you can trade the market successfully and if you if you try to do that, I think what you'll find um, using using indicators like we have is basically you run up while the market rises, you go sideways while the market pulls back, run up while the market goes side or er, goes up again, and then you're out for the second half where the market's pulling back and you're in cash, and you keep making these step moves. Now you're going to pay taxes along the way, but the other thing you're never going to do is live through a big. 30, 40, 50% downturn. And so to me, you're protecting capital as you go and you're using um, the strength of the market. So in this case, cash as a relative strength tool, you're in cash while the market's pulling back. And then you put, you've got all your cash sitting there ready to put to work. When you get near a market low, we start to get signals on my indicators and then you can start to buy back in. And hopefully that helps you protect your capital as well as make big gains at the same time. So 
I can tell you I started using the strength indexes two years ago. It's been life-changing in terms of performance for me because I'm not living through downtrends and I'm um, staying in the market for uptrends or I'm riding things that continue to work even though the market's rolled over. So as an example, energy did okay. So you'd stay in energy until it starts to break down. Okay. All that to say, I want to make it very clear that yes, you can successfully time the market. You can do it with large amounts of capital and understanding the difference between all of these relative strength tools can help you make profit. Thank you for taking the time to join me on Market Buzz. Market Buzz airs Wednesdays at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time. You can also see the recording on Stock Charts TV YouTube page. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.